We are Grog Talk. We are back. Thanks again to CNHT, the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers, for allowing us to use this space. Visit them at cnht.org. Don't do net or com. Do org. And uh, get updated on all the latest in municipal policy rules, changes, right to know, voter fraud, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, thanks for the space. We uh, have Mr. Rogers, we have Mr. Abramson, and Mr. Murphy at the table. I am Steve McDonald, and we have 13 minutes left. What are we going to do with them? And, and we escaped from Murphy's Law in the nick of time at 08.59 when Skip's PC burst into life. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And one more follow-up quote for Mr. Kevin Bloom. New Hampshire State Representative Susan Almy, talking about co- being constitutionally minded. Well, you don't get to decide what's constitutional, and I don't get to decide what's constitutional. The judiciary decides what's constitutional. A prime example of an individual basically saying, it's not my job, Bon, when it should be all of our jobs. It's my job. It's your job. It's his job. It's his job to decide what's constitutional. And then to tell our elected reps, this is Warn constitutional. Warn me before you do that. <laughs> Mike so. had a phone call. Had to go quick. All right. Um, I, I'm looking for something that Mike brought up. So anyway, go ahead and keep talking. You, you, we, we haven't even touched half the stuff we were going to talk about with you, oh, Max. Oh, good gravy. We had <laughs> we I, two I hours. I wouldn't even know where to begin. We've been talking about election laws. Let me, let me think. Uh, gosh, what have we had come up? Um, HB 323. Which is? Was a very good bill that would have made... Uh, uh, state and federally mandated testing optional. Unfortunately, Chairman Ladd, who is also a Jasper Crat and has heard us many, many times in many, many ways, went right to the floor without a debate and put an amendment on the floor. He did this with HB 276 and he did it with HB 323, both local control bills. He showed up with a floor amendment. No one had had time to read it, hadn't been debated, hadn't been vetted in committee. There was no public hearing. And on voice, Jasper had him on voice votes in both cases and just did the yay and nay. I think on one of them there were as many people saying nay as yay, and he still called it a yay. So he, in, in amending these good Republican bills, they're defeating a lot of good Republican bills by, um, by uh, amending it on the floor. They did the same thing with, uh, although they amended in Judiciary Committee, they amend, amended the late-term abortion bill, which I think was 26 weeks. Two-thirds of Americans believe, even pro-choice, that second trimester abortion should be banned or limited in most cases. Eighty percent believe that third trimester abortions should be banned or limited in most cases. So 80 percent of Americans are with us on at least banning late-term abortions. Two-thirds are with us even going back to the second semester, which, which is 13 weeks. We, were, we had a bill at 26 weeks. Horrigan... And some of the others amended it in Judiciary, Horrigan's on Judiciary. This would be Timothy Horrigan, erstwhile and often commenter at Granite Rock. Mm-hmm. That's him. But he's, he's very civil. <clears throat> oh, he's yeah, very he's well educated. Huh? He's very articulate. But he's very much on the left. And, and in this wrong. particular case. Let's just say it. <laughs> in this particular case, he spoke on the floor. Um, and we ended up having. We ended up having to table our own pro-life bill, and it was it was just a very simple. Eighty percent of Americans are with us. Third trimester abortions. That was it. Very reasonable. Everyone agrees with us except for the pro-abortion crowd. Now there's a pro-choice crowd, there's a pro-life crowd, and there's a pro-abortion crowd. We've been finding we can get the pro-choice people to come over to the pro-life side on a few issues: fetal homicide, taxpayer funding of abortion, taxpayer funding of advocacy cooling off periods, informed parental consent. So on some of these these issues um, requiring a, a, an ultrasound of the baby greatly reduces the number of abortions. When a, when a woman is fully informed, especially a teenage girl, if she's fully informed, if she talks to her parents, if she gets the options, most of the time she does not have an abortion. So the pro-abortion crowd wants to take that information away from them. They want these teenage girls only going to a guidance counselor at the, in the public schools who's pushing for them to have an abortion, even if they're not pregnant, which, which happened to a, a girl, I think she was 14 or 15. She went to see her high school guidance counselor, and the very first thing that the guidance counselor said was, yeah, you need to have this abortion. And she said, well, I'm not even pregnant. <laughs> it's, just, 
<laughs> it's so it's so automatic. It's so it's such a rubber stamp. So uh, they're not pro-choice. I they're want to know what abortion. college I should go to. You need to have an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Hillary laugh? No, that's, that's the, the Jane Cormier laugh. It's oh. not really her. <laughs> but it sounds like her. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, Jane's yeah. a wonderful... I, I uh, wish my, my, it sounds much more like Jane than Hillary, which is a, a crackly cackle. Yeah. Jane ran for state senate, almost unseated. What was it, Putin? Putin, yep. yeah. Jane's, Jane's terrific. She's a real, real Republican. And um, we were all rooting for her. Unfortunately, she... Came in just a little shy, and Bootin had what was it, over a hundred thousand dollars. Bootin had the support of the state party. Uh, you know, one of the one of the nastiest and most incestuous things about the Power Club in in Concord and in in Washington is once you're on the inside, they'll all pitch in to keep you there, especially if you're one of the play along types. Uh, you know. In the, the U.S. Senate is perhaps the worst club in that respect, is that none of the members will really speak ill of the other members. And Even when it's deserved. When there is a contested primary, the state party needs to stay out. Unfortunately, they are routinely taking sides with these rhinos. They're not providing much support, or they're providing no support for conservatives. Kevin Navarre, John Reagan... Yeah. Um, you know, and they'll they'll provide unlimited amounts of support to support well, the we, C we, and D we rhinos. Have, we have one of the uh, poster children for that very problem uh, actually speaking tomorrow. Um, Harry Reid very nearly got unseated by a good conservative six years ago, and that would be eight years ago. That would be Sharon Angle, and she will be speaking. And the reason Sharon Angle didn't win. Sure, she was a little inexperienced politically, but she was doing her best, and she was thoroughly committed to the task. The problem is that the Republican Party withdrew their support over some imagined faux pas, and uh, rather than help shore up the finances and help fix any irregularities, they claimed irregularities that weren't there and backed away. Now that always seems and she still got 45% of the vote. Can you imagine what could have happened if they'd actually pitched in? Well, this is what happens with the Republicans, and we saw this in Indiana the, you know, over the last couple of weeks, that they refuse to stand up for principles, and then they wonder why people aren't voting for them uh, afterwards. If you don't stand up to your principles, if you don't show that you're willing to stand up and fight for something, you end up fighting nothing. And people say, why should we bother when you won't stand up for us? And we've seen that here. We saw that here in New Hampshire in the Walt Havenstein race for governor and for U.S. Senate with Scott Brown. If you're not going to stand up for substantial parts of uh, the party that truly believe in those issues, those people are going to stay home or they're not just not going to vote for you. And yeah. we saw that they refused to vote in those two races. Not very yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> uh, you know, Hammerstein wouldn't wouldn't step away or disavow a state, a controversial statement he'd made. Uh, Scott Brown doubled down on the pro-abortion vote uh, with with, you know, an, another ad basically declaring himself to be the, to the left of Maggie Hassan on the on the topic. Uh, you know, these problems are, are rife everywhere. And, and, you know, word to the wise to Governor Pence, don't bother. Uh, you know, and I've been an admirer of the guy for six or seven years since I first heard him speak. He speaks very well. He, he, uh, he, you know, he talks the talk. But when the chips were down in Indiana, when the usual activist came out and said religious freedom, uh, that'll cause discrimination, instead of saying, no, no, this is just religious freedom. This is protection for people of con conscience and nothing more. Uh, he, he caved and f fixed the bill so that there is, in fact, no protection for the small business people anymore. No, not for individuals. It seems to be the, the, uh, the Obama meme of freedom to worship, which basically says you can worship within your church, you can worship as you like in your home, but come out to the public square which is really what the First Amendment freedom of expression means, we're not going to see that anymore. So and can we arrest them when they come out yelling Allahu Akbar? Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, right to peaceably assemble and... And the, right, and the right and the right to peaceably not assemble. Freedom of association means I can choose who I do and don't do business with. And yet those are understood rights that, that young people don't understand now. 
No. They're, they have the they have the lawyers. The bar association is, is what's pushing its version of social tolerance. And if you're not socially tolerant enough, they want to be able to sue everybody who has money, every business owner, every homeowner, everyone, just for and, quote and unquote then, discrimination. And then, and then they'll wonder why they can't buy a cake anywhere in the end. Yeah, and this goes back to what we talked about with Carly, Carly Fiorina, which was the administrative state with the various regulations that now trump not only law but our constitutional foundational law and this is the thing that we've seen that inversion of what used to be held highest constitutionality now become of no account whatsoever this is part of the deep transformation of american culture right and you know uh when you were talking about what the reps in the new hampshire house were saying about the constitution and about how they you didn't consider it to be important. You know, this is the perfect illustration of mind over matter. They don't mind, so the Constitution doesn't matter. And unfortunately, our educational system, and I keep coming back to this bugaboo over and over again, our educational system is no longer teaching our young folks not only our real history, but the philosophy behind that history. And all they're being told is, well, we were founded by old white slavers. Uh, you know, thank, you know, rich th people. Thank God for Rush Limbaugh and his series of books on the real revolution in American, American history that might reach some of these skulls full of mush before it's too late. Were you trying to pull a quote? Uh, I don't really know if I have time. I keep um, going back to uh, liberal fascism by uh, <clears throat> Jonah Goldberg. Jonah Goldberg. Called. And one of the things you need to look up is um, uh, Sorrell's syndicalism. And there's a lot of good quotes about it. I don't have time to read it today. But what he basically says is that the issue is not nearly as important as the perception of the fight. It doesn't matter if you oppose gay marriage or if you're in favor of gay marriage and somebody is against it. What matters is that you are willing to rise up against it even if you don't give a damn. It's about the perception. It's about organizing. It's about getting people to stand up for something even if they don't understand it. And that's what they do. That's what they do with the union members. That's what they do with their grassroots groups. That's what they do uh, with that's, their paid that, hacks. That, that, that's why Jesse Jackson said of Obama, he's not down from the struggle. That was just before he said he was going to cut his nuts off. <laughs> well. <coughs> what a way to end the show. Can't have a show without the word nuts in it, can we? We need to no, talk no, about no. these issues. And, and by the of... way, these were squirrel nuts I was referring okay, to. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're out of nuts. We have to go. Uh, thank you so much for another week of Grok Talk. Next <laughs> week, we will be back with more news, more politics, and more Grok Talk. See you later. Yeah, baby. Rock TV.